I woke up this morning to some news from my, I mean, my BFF, right? My, uh, the former NFL MVP, I'll call him a frenemy, Cam Newton. My goodness, Cam Newton chiming in here on the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott, a, a shocking development. So obviously, listen, we know the Cowboys have been America's team for what, going on 50 years now? I mean, they haven't been totally dominant in the last 20, but I've got some good news for Cowboys fans. It's not all terrible news off the heels of the Dak Prescott walking boot photo yesterday. But Cam Newton decided on his podcast, you know, he's new to this media space, that he's declaring the Cowboys should not be America's team. Just because we're calling them the America's team, it should be the Chiefs because Taylor Swift is dating Travis Kelsey. Oh, Oh, okay. Cam had a roundabout way of essentially saying that America's team, like, why are we doing that? And Cam has spoken, so we should all listen. Well, Cam is kind of new to this media thing, so I'm going to fill you in a little bit here, Cam. Uh, The New England Patriots were winners for two decades. They had a dynasty with Brady and Belichick. They won a, I think Brady won seven Super Bowls. They were never America's team. It, It just didn't take. And as a matter of fact, if you ask me, They were hated outside of New England. People were tired of that dynasty. So just because right now the Kansas City Chiefs have won three Super Bowls in five years and Travis Kelsey's dating Taylor Swift, it doesn't make them America's team. It's still the Cowboys, a blue blood franchise, which, you know, dating back to the 70s has always been on top in the NFL. And listen, they play on Thanksgiving every year for a reason. The Dallas Cowboys haven't had back-to-back losing seasons since 2002. Folks, the Cowboys have been really, really good. Just because they haven't had postseason success doesn't mean we should strip the America's team moniker from Dallas. All I know is when I was uh, a young NFL fan in the 90s and the Cowboys were dominant, then the internet comes up and you got the starter jackets, everybody was a Cowboys fan. Everyone. Not just teenage girls under 13 who love the Chiefs now because of Taylor Swift. I don't know, Cam. It just felt a little weird like you were trying to, I don't know, engagement farm perhaps. I think J.J. Reddick would be proud here uh, in in the down season in the NFL. You're engagement farming, using the Cowboys to kind of cut through. But, Cam, that's just not how it works. Dallas is America's team. You want to go look at the NFL schedule? Cowboys in the early window four times. All season. Why is that? Oh, it's because everybody wants their eyeballs on the Cowboys. They're in prime time all the time. They're in the 4 p.m. window all the time because they got fans all over America. Hell, Cam, I don't know if you noticed, but on July 4th, a photo emerged of Dak Prescott in a protective walking boot. And the NFL media went to DEFCON 1. It was panic time. And everybody freaked out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, here he is. Dak Prescott, a walking boot. The What's Trey Lance? Is he going to be starting week one? Like people went ballistic. They lost their minds over a photo of Dak Prescott in a walking boot. Like this is America's team. This is what they are, Cam. And, you know, we'll talk to someone uh, later in the show, a great guest who actually has texted with Cam, uh, sorry, with Dak Prescott about the injury. It was preventative. He was going fishing. Stand down, everybody. It's going to be okay. But this is what comes with the territory of America's team. I know, you know, Cam is not as high on Dak Prescott as I am. And Cam is the king of hot takes and hats. Dak Prescott right now has led the Cowboys to three straight 12-win seasons. I think he should get paid. I'm not as down on Dak as everyone else. Obviously, it's a massive season with the McCarthy situation looming, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons. I'm not saying Dak Prescott is some world beater. I think he's good. I think he's a top 10, 11 quarterback in the league. But to try to steal the moniker, say, Dallas is no longer America's team. Cam, hey, I know you're new to this media stuff. But nice try. It's a bit of a miss. Let's move to the NBA where LeBron James and all the biggest stars in the league will descend upon Vegas for USA basketball training camp. They will train in Vegas this week. Then they will battle Canada, I believe, next week and as a tune up for the Olympics. But at training camp, you guys can take a guess what the biggest story is going to be. 39 year old LeBron James. And boy, what what a rough summer for LeBron, huh? I mean, goodness gracious. The guy handpicks the Lakers' next head coach. 
his podcast buddy. Then he gets the Lakers to draft his son in the second round and give him a big fat contract. You can, you can, it's dripping with hate, folks. You know it's coming. And then LeBron says, I'll take less to bring in free agents. And then they don't get anyone. Oh, wow. You know, the media, the ink stained wretches who are going to be covering this team in Vegas, it could get ugly. The, a lot of these guys grew up Michael Jordan sycophants, younger in the 90s. They love Jordan. They're not huge fans of LeBron. And you know the media loves to build people up and then tear them down. And it is coming. Folks, do you see the article that dropped this morning? I, I don't know if you saw it. Big question. So is LeBron going to come off the bench for Team USA? The pylon begins. They're coming after the king. But you, you know the saying from the wire, you come at the king, you best not miss. People are now speculating, should LeBron come off the bench for Team USA? This stacked team. I mean, obviously, Joel Embiid will start at center. Right? We got that. You got Steph Curry as your point guard. Here's the roster we got on FS1. Um, probably need Kevin Durant as your stretch four. Okay, so that's three spots. Then you need a lockdown wing defender. Well, that's not LeBron. That's probably Kawhi Leonard, right? He's healthy, allegedly. Steve Kerr says he's healthy. Whatever. And then you'll need like a shooting guard to fill it up. Maybe a D book, Anthony Edwards. You want to get very defensive, Drew Holiday. Maybe it's all matchup dependent when they play France. And oh my gosh, I can't wait for that game. Uh, Gobert and Wembenyama are working together right now as a starter for France. That is an impenetrable back line. And USA will have to counter with Embiid and Anthony Davis probably starting. But all of this is a way, roundabout way of saying, well, shucks, it, should LeBron come off the bench? And you know there's somebody sitting there stewing, just wait, I'm going to come off the bench? Really? You guys are sending me to Paris so I can come off the bench? <laughs> you think, how's, how's LeBron going to take that? And, folks, we're at this weird space now. And we'll get to in depth a little shortly where once the athletes get near the end, it starts to become open season on them because the media has been, you know, ball washing these guys for two decades. And now all of a sudden it's ah, LeBron is 39. Now it's weird because in the eighties, you know, magic obviously uh, had to retire early. Larry Bird's injuries, he was done in his early to mid-30s. Isaiah Thomas just up and retired before he was even 35. Jordan quit two times by, by, by well before the age of 39. So it's like LeBron's playing at 30. We should be applauding him and excited that he's still around and playing at such a high all-NBA level, averaging 25, 7, and 7, or whatever the numbers are. And now you guys are trying to drive him to the bench? Listen, we know the, that commanding control of a team and the court and just owning everything is a space of basically three guys in the NBA right now. Three people do it better than anyone. Anybody can score. Anybody can be a pure point guard. Anybody can rebound. But when you've got somebody who does all those, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, and LeBron James, they're still the three best at totally controlling all the pieces on the chessboard. They've got everything, manipulating defenses. They're the three best at it. Two of those guys, they're not playing for USA, obviously. And by the way, Luka Doncic has a seismic battle against Giannis tomorrow. One of those two teams, Greece or Slovenia, will not make the Olympics. And I'm sure their NBA coach will be thrilled that they get a rest <laughs> in the summer. But other than Luka and Jokic, who are, I think, like 13 years, 12, 13 years, LeBron's junior, LeBron is better than anyone on Team USA at manipulating defenses. Steph Curry has the gravitational pull that you've got to guard him on the perimeter. He'll be hitting 30-footers, okay? But, like, Kawhi Leonard doesn't do the stuff LeBron does. He's a great defender, and he's a good mid-range guy. Okay, probably great mid-range, but fine, whatever. Like, I like Jason Tatum a lot. He doesn't do all the things LeBron does, although the playmaking was kind of unlocked in the, in the finals. He looked great, in my opinion. Uh, led the Celtics in assists. But you need LeBron out there. I cannot envision a scenario where LeBron's coming off the bench for this team. It would take some big cojones from Steve Kerr to say, yeah, LeBron, we're going to call. Uh, you'll be the sixth man in Paris. I, I, I don't see a world where that's happening. I do see a world. Yeah, LeBron's not the shooter Kevin Durant is, right? And you want to stretch those defenses. You know they'll pack the paint in the Olympics with the uh, FIBA rules. It's going to be fascinating. I don't see a scenario where LeBron comes off the bench, but certainly it's got to be in play in certain 
individual matchups. Like, I would sooner start Drew Holiday at the two and have him defend wings, and then I'd have LeBron in there for offense. But we'll see. Steve Kerr has options. You look at the roster, and it's like, this team is stacked. They're loaded. Uh, you know, Bam Adebayo, Tyrese Halliburton. These are end-of-the-bench guys, and they're like top-tier dudes in the NBA. There's a loaded team, and I just, it's going to get weird if the media starts pushing, should LeBron come off the bench? We already saw one article this morning. I hope we don't see any more. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.